What's up, Headliner Nation? It's your boy Kyle Richardson coming back with another episode of the Fantasy Headliners. In the last couple of episodes I've done, it's been about breakout or bust. This episode, we're going to talk a little bounce back or bust and whether or not we should be taking advantage of this guy's ADP and if you're comfortable drafting him where he is currently going. Before we get into that information, though, Just to remind you, the Fantasy Headliners Draft Guide is currently available for pre-order, $19.99 at thefantasyheadliners.com. It's going to be about 600 pages of pure fantasy football bliss. So go get it, ladies and gentlemen. You want it. You need it. You got to have it. Trust me, you're going to love it. So make sure you head over to thefantasyheadliners.com. Pre-order yours today. It's going to be dropping in about a month, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. About the end of June is what we're shooting for. So get yours today by pre-ordering at thefantasyheadliners.com. And let's move on and talk about Juju Smith-Schuster and whether or not he will bounce back in 2020. All right, so we seem to get a lot of questions about Juju Smith-Schuster. He's not really being talked about a whole lot other than, hey, is he going to bounce back? The question right now seems to revolve around the backfield and then who's the breakout candidate on the other side of Juju this year. Well, let's focus in on Juju himself and try to determine whether or not he's going to get back to his old form or is he going to be more like what we saw last season. Now, let's keep in mind some of the stats that he has put together recently in 2019 Yeah, dealt with some issues. Only ended up playing in 12 games, 70 targets, 42 receptions, 552 yards. He did average 13.1 yards per reception, but only scored three touchdowns, down from seven touchdowns that he had each of his first two seasons. His big year was 2018, though, and that's the year that really catapulted him up to being considered the number one wide receiver in drafts last season. Yes, there were lots of people, even a lot of people that work in the fantasy football industry that widely considered Juju Smith-Schuster to be the number one overall wide receiver in drafts. I mean, the guy had a late first round ADP at one point. I think he ended up settling in that early to mid second round. But in 2018, the big year, played in all 16 games, 166 targets, 111 receptions, 1,426 yards, had 12.8 yards per reception, and seven touchdowns. So last season, what was it? Was it Juju? Is that what we need to come to expect? Or was it the offense around him? So let's take a look at that. Last season, his yards after the catch per reception was at 5.7, a career low, but not that far off of 2018, only 0.2 yards off of that and about a full yard worse than 2017, his rookie year. But not only that, even with the issues at quarterback last year, Ben Roethlisberger going down with his injury early in the year, and then we had to see Mason Rudolph and Duck Hodges try to get us through and limp through the season, his air yards per target was a career high. His air yards per target last year in 2019 came out to be 10.33 air yards per target, up from 895 the year before, in 10.26 in 2017, his rookie year. So right there, there are some telling stats that the juju that we saw last year may have been a product of the environment around him and the players around him and not necessarily his performance or him as a player. Because remember, there was a lot of questions about whether Juju could survive as the wide receiver one in that offense. And I think a lot of people are trying to to back away and say, eh, he can't do it on his own. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Something else to keep in mind. His 2.08 yards per route run last year were 11th among wide receivers that had at least 100 receptions. So anybody that had 100 receptions was included in this category, he had the 11th most yards per route run. So every route that he ran, you figure out his yards that he had overall for the season. So for every route that he ran, he had 2.08 yards, okay? 11th best, that's that's pretty darn good. That's pretty darn good. Is it elite level? Maybe not elite level, but it's better than what we saw from his total numbers. And also, he had 4.9 yards of cushion last year, which was tied for fifth most in the league. Now, yards of cushion, that is the average yards between the defender and the wide receiver at the time of the snap. 
What that tells me is that because of the lack of weapons around Juju last year, with Antonio Brown being gone, with no more Le'Veon Bell, defenders probably played a little bit different. They didn't have to, to sit up on Juju and press him a little bit. They could play a little bit more zone, or they could keep an eye on him and play off of him on man coverage because there would always be backup for him because there weren't defenders trying to take care of a, a of another superior wide receiver on the other side of the field. Again, this is going to come into play here in a minute as well. But the question really, again, I, th I think we've determined at this point, and what I'm, what I'm trying to paint a picture of is, is Juju the player, Juju the athlete, is still Juju, okay? He's still a good wide receiver. He still has that talent. He can still do a lot of things on the football field. Is he what we saw in 2018? Probably not that type of a receiver. But there was issues around him last year that didn't allow him to excel. So now we need to ask ourselves, how healthy is Ben Roethlisberger? That's going to be one of the biggest questions now is what's going on with Ben Roethlisberger. Our doctor here at the Fantasy Headliners, Dr. Ethan Turner, a lot of you, if you've been a part of Headliner Nation, you've seen some of his videos you've done already. Him and Jake did a video on Ben Roethlisberger a while back. I highly encourage you to go find it and watch the entire thing. Some great graphics, and Ethan really walks you through everything. If you're new to Headliner Nation, hit that subscribe button and keep an eye out for more of his videos because he does a really good job. So this is information I'm taking from that video and just kind of repurposing to you. So this is all from, from Ethan Turner, Dr. Ethan Turner, okay? He is the injury expert here. But what we had in 2019 with Ben Roethlisberger with a U, was a UCL tear. And, and the UCL is what keeps the elbow in the socket. And just to kind of throw at you, he was kind of showing it like if you were throwing a football, it's it's what keeps the arm, the show, or the um, elbow from just dropping back. Okay, it's it's what allows this part here to kind of stay at that 90 degree angle. The way he was kind of talking about it with the UCL, if that's tear. It, it just goes right back, okay? So that's what allows you to really uncork and go through. So that's kind of what he was talking about when he was going through all of that with, with Jake. So we'll head back over to the slide now so I can give you a little bit more information on that. But it's what keeps the elbow in the socket. So when you have Tommy John surgery, if you're a baseball fan, if you have Tommy John surgery as a pitcher... It can take a while for you to rebound. So 18 to 24 months is a, a return to full throwing activities after Tommy John. Tommy John is the surgery that typically you have to repair that type of an issue. And with baseball players, they, they come back about 12 months. But if you've ever noticed with a pitcher, accuracy can be off. Sometimes the, vel the velocity can be down, and really it's just about returning to the form that you had before you injured yourself, because psychologically, there's still a lot of things going on. Health-wise, you're still trying to get yourself back to full strength, so even at 12 months after Tommy John, you can get back out on the field it as a quarterback in this case, or pitcher, or whatever it may be, you can get back out on the field and do a lot of things, but it's going to be a while before you're truly yourself again. However, with Ben Roethlisberger, as Ethan talked about in that episode, Ethan said that the Steelers have adamantly said that he didn't have Tommy John surgery. And Ethan went into kind of a diagnosis. He did a deep dive and did a lot of research to find out what is the new type of surgery that is going on that is allowing athletes to skip Tommy John. And he talked about that more in depth, and he said that that surgery would allow a quarterback really to come back within that nine to 12 month period. So, but he said it's a very new surgery. There's not a lot, there's not a lot of statistics on it. There's not a lot of research as well. So it's really hard to tell what could end up happening with Ben Roethlisberger if he didn't have Tommy John surgery and he had this new surgery instead that was like a brace that was placed within the elbow. So it was really interesting. Again, this is all from Ethan. He's our medical expert. Go check out that video. He goes in depth. If you have questions about Ben Roethlisberger, but he he is seriously worried about Roethlisberger and what he can do coming back this year, okay? So from 2013 to 2018, Ben Roethlisberger has 3,406 passing attempts. That is seventh most in the NFL. So they have been slinging it for quite a while. So are we going to see a new commitment to the run game this year? I absolutely think that we could. Now, the rushing attempts for the Steelers over the last several years, 20th in 2019, 
31st in 2018, but 16th and 13th the two years before that. And again, those two years is when you had Le'Veon Bell and you had Antonio Brown. With Le'Veon Bell, even though he he wasn't getting you know, 30 some odd carries a game, he was highly efficient with his carries and he was touching the ball in the passing game as well. For passing attempts, last year all the way down to 26, but the two years before that, they were number one in the NFL in passing attempts, 14th back in 2016. The Steelers could absolutely move back to more of what we see in 2019 where they're very balanced in terms of what they are doing, where they're running the ball, where they're running the ball not nearly as much as they're passing it, but in terms of league averages, they're going to be about the middle of the pack in both of those. Because if Roethlisberger's elbow really is a concern and there's going to be maybe trouble throwing deep down the field or just getting him back into the groove of things and being careful with him and taking it steady, absolutely tone it back with him a little bit. Tone it back and allow him to work a little bit shorter in the field and win the game with your defense. The Steelers are going to have a top five defense this year. Jake and I love the Steelers defense and what they can do pressuring uh, opposing defenses, getting takeaways, and uh, keeping the offense out on the field and getting themselves off the field. The, the Steelers could really turn to a format this year where they say, you know what, we're going to win games with our defense, and we're going to win games with the run game, something we have not seen them do in the past. That could 100% happen here in 2020. However, if I had to pick one target, give me Juju, because if they really are going to work a little bit more of a short passing game, and they're going to give me the guy, give me Juju, okay, give me Juju who's going to be working a little bit shorter in the field. And that's what this has looked like over the past couple of years. So let's take a look at their success over the middle of the field the last couple of years. In 2019, 0 to 10 yards between the numbers, okay? 19 targets, 14 receptions, 136 yards, no touchdowns for Juju Smith-Schuster. So these are his numbers. Not a lot. uh, They didn't really live there. They didn't do a whole lot there. Yes, that is where he had the majority of his targets, But let me show you what his stats look like in 2018 with this. In 2018, that same area, 0 to 10 yards between the numbers, 54 targets, 46 receptions, 392 yards, and a touchdown. What this tells me by looking at this is that even though when you look at the numbers, you can see the numbers and you say, you know what? The receiving yards on a per reception basis were not that bad. The passer rating was about the same. The reason that the Steelers were able to live in the middle of the field with Juju is because you had Antonio Brown on the outside pulling those defenders out of the middle of the field. Not only that, but if they were good with the run game in 2018, they averaged 4.2 yards per carry. So even though they weren't running the football a whole lot... When they were, they were being decent with it. So defenders, any of those linebackers, were probably playing up on the line a little bit more. And what Juju can do is he can go 10 yards down the field, possibly slip behind those linebackers or on either side of them. And all of a sudden, Roethlisberger's got himself a wide-open target that he can work with because in 2018, Vance McDonald was also really good. He was not good last year. He was good in 2018, though. So what we need this year, what we need, the perfect combination, what we have to do to get Juju back to being the player that we thought he would be last year is a couple of different things. Number one, we do need Ben Roethlisberger to be healthy. I don't think he needs to throw it nearly as much as he did in 2017 and 2018. I think he can kind of live in those numbers that we saw last year in terms of passing attempts. And if Juju's his main target... He's going to get more than enough work to be a wide receiver, too. I am not going to bump him up to a wide receiver one. In my last rankings, I had him there. I'm going to bump him back down now. And this is why we do a lot of rankings over the offseason and a ton of research. Because now, after diving into this information for me, I'm confirming to myself that Juju doesn't have that wide receiver one ceiling for me this year. So his current ADP of wide receiver 14 off the board is probably about his ceiling. He's being drafted at his ceiling right now. But what else we need, we need somebody from the Steelers to step up on the outside. 
whether it's Deontay Johnson, James Washington, Chase Claypool, one of these guys that they have that are playing on the outside and they move Juju back into a more solidified role in the slot, then if you've got those guys on the outside that are pulling defenders down the field, then Juju can start to thrive in the middle of the field again like we saw with those charts I just showed you. That's the perfect storm for getting, that's the recipe for getting Juju back to what we hoped to see last year. That's what we have to have. Jake has a lot of good Deontay Johnson information. I'm not going to give anything away, okay? I know Jake believes in him. If Deontay Johnson can break out, Juju has a shot. If Chase Claypool can have a good year, then he has a shot. And don't forget, the running game is really reinforced right now. Yeah, you have James Conner, but you still have Jalen Samuels. You have Benny Snell. And they added Anthony McFarland in the draft, the guy I really, really, really like, a speedster-type guy that can help stretch that defense out as well. So I think this offense, it's setting itself up for success, but we have to have a few things happen. So right now, Juju's current ADP, 14 for wide receiver off the board, that's his ceiling for me. A high-end wide receiver, too, is probably what he's going to be able to obtain. He's going to have to probably get back towards that, those seven touchdowns that we saw from the two previous years, but he's going to have to he's going to live in that area. He might be more of a mid-wide receiver, too, by the time the season is done. But, again, Juju is still a talented athlete. He's still a good football player. We saw those stats that showed us that he can still do things after the catch with the football that he's done in years past. It's the offense around him that has changed. There aren't those players around him to pull defenders away. They're a little bit more collapsed into that middle of the field type area because Antonio Brown isn't stretching the field, taking him that way. Everyone's kind of going down into the middle of the field because, number one, that's, the, that's where they know Juju's going to live is in the middle of the field. But then they can stop the run game as well. So that's why we need these things to happen around us. So Headliner Nation, make your decision. And let me know in the comments below, what do you think about Juju this year? Are you going to go ahead and take a shot at him? Are you going to try and stay away? Do you think his ADP is good right now? Are you going to take him as your wide receiver too? What are your thoughts on that? Make sure you hit that like button though. If you enjoyed the video and you enjoyed the content, these are the videos I love doing. We're really diving deep and giving you some really awesome content. If you love it, Hit that like button, and if you're not already subscribed to the, the Fantasy Headliners, consider it. Hit that subscribe button, stick around, and see the type of work we do around here. I promise you won't be disappointed. I hope everyone out in Headliner Nation is having a great day, having a great week. Stay safe, stay healthy. I'll catch you on the next episode. Have a good one.